Vonilife 2025, Resurrected Introduction, back in March 1973, Rayo and many of the most hardcore self-liberators of the time, and likely even today, published a massive 75,000-word issue of Vonilife, that is shockingly relevant and of immense value, even today. And while that was a highlight, there was also an entire zine series of Vonulife, which I recently digitized. As Rayo finished up those last words of transcribing, it was with a heavy heart dot until the idea hit him like a collapsing roof of a badly engineered underground shelter. Vonulife should most certainly be resurrected, just as the overall freedom strategy of Vonu has in the modern day and age. And if you know anything about Vonulife, you know some of the greatest content came from contributors. That's where you come in. Let's dive into the plan. The plan. Vonulife, March 1973, was the only issue released in that year. Similarly, we should aim for one book a year, the first being Vonulife 2025. That will give ample time to acquire and create content, and to have plenty to report on as far as developments, or setbacks, of our liberated lifestyles. Content Section 1, Situations and Searches Lifestyle Reports from Self-Liberators, a report about your liberated lifestyle, things you've learned, your goals, what led you to venuism slash self-liberation, etc. Reviews of books, equipment, organizations, tips and tricks, etc. Information that you feel is valuable to pass on, that's not in article form. Section 2, General Strategy. Back in Vonulife's heyday, topics sought out included, Van Nomadism, Pedestrian Nomadism, Wilderness Vonu, International Travel, Family and Children, Intentional Communities, New Country Projects, Financial Independence, Health Liberation, Vonu in Cities, and Underground Shelters and Troglodism, we still want articles on any and all of those topics, but additional ones include, Private Communications, Sovereign Networking, Vonuing in Cities in the 2020s, Alternative Housing Solutions etc. If you're curious about your topic in particular, just ask. Examples of both will be posted at vonupodcast.com slash the year 2025. Timeframes. Any submissions must be made by July 1st, 2025. After a few months of editing and preparing, we will aim for a fall 2025 release. Notes this is not a general, send us an article submission to fill space. It has to be of the caliber that Vonulife deserves and was founded upon, hardcore solutions slash hardcore action, no political crusading and no collective movementism, the principle of voluntarism, that all interactions should be voluntary, must be maintained. I.e., don't siphon, steal, gas to fund your van nomadism. General proofreading slash editing will be done on every article, maintaining each author's individual voice, but as always, editorial designs have to be made. Email submissions, questions, ideas to, shane at libertyunderattack.com. And welcome to the Vonu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane Rayo2, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia at the Self Liberators Paradise. Uh, to learn more about this growing parallel network, uh, to check out the vetted map and directory, to view listings, or post your own at Pasnia List, the Craigslist of the Second Realm, uh, or finally, to meet and chat with others, other self liberators, uh, visit pasnia.chat forward slash meet, uh, or just pasnia.com generally for the rest of those things. Uh, it's been at least a little while since you've heard my voice on a podcast. Uh, as of late, uh, Brian Free Robot, my trusty AI robot co-host, uh, has been taking listeners through audio versions of Vonu Life, uh, Vonu Link, and now Preform Inform. Uh, that, and uh, trying to uh, complete archiving and digitizing projects, uh, in addition to uh, spring on a homestead, uh, have been my main priorities. 
Um, yeah, and uh, that and trying to complete archiving and uh, digitizing projects uh, in addition to Spring on a Homestead have been my main uh, priorities. Uh, and some of more boring stuff, like uh, the business side of LA Publications. But uh, it's all good and uh, all fun. Uh, anyway, today, I'm pleased to welcome back my good friend, uh, Jamin Bakonic, uh, our hardware hacker, permaculture farmer, uh, out in the eastern USSA. Now, listeners of the Vani Podcast will surely know Jamin, uh, but if you happen to be new around here, uh, head on over to vanipodcast.com and uh, type in Jamin's name uh, right in there, right there in the search bar. Uh, then you can find our past uh, six or seven conversations on this podcast, I think, uh, and a couple transferred here from uh, Liberty Attack Radio uh, way back in the day. Uh, and Willie hasn't been on TVP for some time. Uh, of course, we correspond often, uh, and there are a number of subjects we have yet to explore uh, that we planned on. Uh, one of those is the ever-prevalent topic uh, topic of AI, which Jamin has been working into uh, his workflows and other things. Uh, he's also been busy with the Ghost System Project, uh, which we've talked about uh, on this podcast before uh, in, in quite substantial depth. We'll get an update on that. Uh, he's also been building out his infrastructure and, uh, I'm sure, other things. Uh, so, yeah, without further ado, Jamin, uh, welcome back, uh, my friend. Uh, how are things going? Pretty good. Thanks for having me back, Shane. Hey, no problem, brother. No problem. Um, so, yeah, I guess let's... Uh, I, I remember last time we talked, uh, I guess it, it's probably been almost a year, some, somewhere around there, maybe a little less, but I think the last update, the last Homestead update was essentially that you were... Um, you kind of tried to automate or, I guess, uh, not really expand things there, but just kind of maintain and, and, I guess, harvest, I guess you could say. Um, but I guess, yeah, give us Homestead updates. What's what's new there? Well, the uh, the main thing we're doing on the Homestead right now, as far as the outside goes, is just... Um, sheet mulching like i'm not exactly sure how much how many of the beds we're going to plan out but um we're going to grow good soil no matter what so i'll top um i'll basically top dress the cardboard mulch i'm putting out and um grow cover crops and the stuff that we're not going to grow like you know vegetable crops in Mm -hmm. but that's about the extent of the homestead type stuff I've been mainly focusing on the uh, my infrastructure and all the other projects. Right, right. Well, I mean, you spent so much time and uh, so much effort again to this point. Um, I guess now you're now you're there where you can, um, you know, kind of let it go on autopilot a little bit. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, for for your benefit, I guess, and I guess for the audiences too, because I haven't really provided. Uh, too many updates on on stuff here, but um, yeah, I know I know I mentioned that, uh, and I shared some pictures and videos. Uh, um, we got a pond a pond dug out, and it's filling up. And um, now that that's done, uh, my dad and I have begun to get ready to uh, put up our I guess quote unquote forever fence. You know, our fifty year fence, um, which I guess has evolved lately, um, clearing out old fence line and uh, prepping a pound some big uh, some big corner posts and uh, things like that. Because um, I'm hoping to maybe in a, in a year or two, um, it'll it'll be a you know you know step-by-step process um because it's a lot of yeah a lot of work but uh, i'm hoping yeah a year or two to have like 50 year uh 50 sheep a year um to sell at auction um or even uh yeah, you know right. e- even better yet um high quality lambs uh, for stakeholders um here in the pasnia co-op so um it'll open up a lot of possibilities uh, a lot of possibilities there but um and i guess the 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 next thing i'll, I'll mention is that we had our first gathering of the year um here at pasnia the great pasnia eclipse I'm sure most everyone knows what time that was. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was great. Um, really, really great group. Um, folks, we'd, we'd eventually like to have move here. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, looking forward to our next event, which I think is, um, I guess just go to pazania.com forward slash Um I don't recall. It's, uh, it's, it's quote unquote Memorial Day weekend um, in the first realm. But um, it's, I think it's that weekend. But yeah, pazania.com forward slash Fest, um, which that gives me an opportunity to plug uh, Vani Fest 5. Um, happening uh, at the end of the year, September 30th to October 7th, here at the Veritas Note of the Free Republic. Uh, it is a vetted event, uh, so I must know you or someone we trust in common as to vouch for your reputation. Uh, just email coordinator at paznia.com if you need help getting vetted uh, or have any questions. Uh, and I have uh, gotten some big confirmations uh, back, too. Um, you know, I really want to tell, but, you know, uh, the enemies of creation have ways of getting in, you know, getting in the way of things if you release them early. So I'll just keep it close to the vest now and in hopes that it, it still pans out that way. So, but yeah, there's, there's, it's, it's definitely an event that uh, um, you want to make it to if you're able. Uh, you know, the audience generally, or Jamin, I, I know it's hard, hard to get out of the homestead, but obviously it'd be awesome to, to, to have you out here at some point. Oh, yeah. If, if I had the resources, I'd definitely go. Yeah. No, I, d- I definitely get it. Yeah, I definitely get it. Because um, I, I, there there have been, a, I guess, a time or two where it's come up for us, but P- Pennsylvania's um, obviously, um, you know, it's, 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 it's quite a trip, I think. But um, at some point, we'd like to get out your way too. But, um, oh, definitely. 
yeah, I guess, uh, anyway, um, that's all, I guess that's all, all I really have on, on homestead updates here. Um, the weather's getting, getting pretty nice. Um, get actually pretty, really, really nice. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, yeah, it's gonna be, gonna be a good summer, good summer, but, um, I'll try, I guess I'll flip it back over to you now, Jamin. Um, uh, do you want to, I guess, give us some of your, uh, go system and, uh, I guess, um, infrastructure updates, uh, what you've been up to? Um, so I've basically been evaluating different systems to, uh, base ghost products on. And, um, I've, I've added a line of ghost stations and those are basically a, uh, a Dell workstation with the management engine disabled and, uh, they're a lot more current and they have, you know, AI capable GPU options and stuff like that. So I've been, um, kind of testing out all the options there and the upgrade options for those systems. Um, along with, uh, starting to 3d print some parts, just some, um, you know, drive holders and, you know, little widgets that, uh, I would be buying. So like I'm getting more into 3d printing and, uh, like for instance, I, um, been building some crypto miners and they have these, I got these little seven inch displays for a really good deal. So I was 3d print. I just 3d printed a bunch of, uh, housings for them mm. because just the bare display is like super delicate. <clears throat> so, you know, stuff like that. So I'm, you know, incorporating more of that, you know, home scale manufacturing into the operation. Um, I guess like one of the one of the systems that uh, it's an extreme value that I found is there is a Dell workstation laptop that is upgradable GPU wise, and there is this data center GPU that fits it that actually isn't very bad for even how old it is, um, and it it's really good for. Uh, um, like the text AI and even image AI and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so that's, that's was an ongoing project testing those out. Cause I was harvesting them from like, they were used in data centers and these cards that had like four of them. So like you could get the cards that had four and, you know, harvest them out and install them into the laptops. So I have a, uh, a small amount of those. And, um, then I have some newer, newer generation than that ghost station AI laptops now that have, uh, you know, much more modern GPUs in them. But, uh, really I, I see the AI stuff as more of the means of production and, uh, I'm trying to integrate all the local free open source AI into the, uh, into my existing products as I, as I can possibly can stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically where my focus has been in building AI servers mm -hmm. for, uh, for inferencing so far, like, I don't, um, as far as AI goes, when we're talking about like the text AI that is so in the news these days, um, there's, you know, the computational workload is different depending on the stage that it's in. Like when it is in a training stage, the workload, <clears throat> excuse me, is a lot more and it needs a lot more VRAM and all that. But in the inference stage, which is like the stage where it's actually being run as a program, um, it'd be easiest to, to describe. That stage requires a lot less. So I've been experimenting with building out inference servers and workstations. And um, my newest system is actually built for training. So I have like three prototypes in on an inexpensive inference server and um, one prototype in on a server slash workstation with 
some decent training capabilities. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, that's uh, um, that all, all sounds uh, sounds very interesting. Um, very interesting. Um, so before I, I jump into, because I kind of have a, uh, I guess, uh, um, something I'll bring up. Um, there was a debate yesterday actually on AI, and I wanted to get your take, um, your take on that. But before we jump forward to that, I wanted to um, take a moment since we're on the, I guess, we're talk, kind of talking some ghost ghost system updates. Um, I posted about this in the Paznia chat and also the Signal chat, um, but I've been using the shit out of uh, the ghost tablets. Um, and, um, I mean, I, I've had it for, um, I've had it for quite some time, but, um, really only as of late, um, I've started take, taking it pretty much everywhere with me. Um, and, um, it's a really, really badass, badass little computer. Um, spins all the way around. It's got a stylus. Um, but yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're pretty amazing. So, um, I would, uh, definitely, definitely recommend, and I'll get them listed on the LA publication site, uh, at some point, along with the ghost stations too. I don't think the ghost stations are on there, but um, I'll, get, I'll get both of those listed at some point. Um, and um, I use, the, I guess, the ghost station. I use that every day too, um, and I love that. But um, I don't know. There's just something about the the, the small, sleek convenience of the ghost tablet. Um, but you might as well just go ahead and get both. Um, so I'd re- what I'd recommend. <laughs> oh yeah, the, I mean it's a layered system. So the the ghost pads. And ghost stations are kind of, are meant to be complementary. So the ghost pad is what you would use your most compartmentalized, highest security stuff on. Like you're, you know, if you're into crypto, like you could have a different virtual machine for each of your <clears throat> wallets, or you know, there's like so many different things you could do to have that to be your like highest ring of security on that system and then basically all your content creation and um anything that is more you know hooked into something commercial and not open source like if you're steam gaming or you know whatever like isolate that to the second system that is better for that anyway right like Mm -hmm. so they're really meant to be used as a as a as a team they're team players. Yeah. No, I, I agree. <laughs> no, I agree. And and I guess the, the other update, um, I, well, I guess there's been a lot of ghost system updates here at Paznia. Um, and there will be more in the more in the very near future too. But um, we got uh, we got Starlink here uh, a month or two ago. Um, thanks, fake Tesla. Um, and now uh, now using uh, using the ghost router um, that you sent me, I think a year ago. Um, and uh, I haven't Sweet. I haven't gotten it. Um, I guess there's some there's some um, some tinkering I have to do with settings, um, but it's working really really well um, for sure. And um, I mean I, I logged in I can I can see all the all the possible features. I don't understand all of them, but um, at some point I'll be uh, I'll be adding Mulvad VPN. Like once I, I once I understand the, the set settings more, I might just run run all traffic through default through Mulvad VPN. Because um, I switched away from Proton finally, um, which has been a it's been a blessing. Gosh. I don't recommend, ever recommend Proton now that I've been somewhere else. Um, at least with VPN and then with their customer huh. service with everything else, um, is just oh, awful. It's just awful. Um, so I, I I finally got rid of Proton and um, then uh, switched over to Mulvad VPN, and uh, I 100 percent definitely recommend. Um, just it's super simple, five dollars a month with you know bit with uh, Bitcoin or Monero, and there's no email. Um, there's just a you just have like a code and that's your login. Um, yeah, it's super, super slick. So I'll probably be adding that um, on to... And it's five devices, too, for $5, I think, up to five devices. So um, super good deal. Um, forget about Proton, at least in my opinion. So, um, and I guess and more on the on the Ghost Router, I guess there there were there were other things, too. Um, I guess, could, could you run through some of the some of the features and possibilities of the Ghost Router for, I guess, for my benefit and also maybe for the, uh, for the listeners? <clears throat> okay, sure. Well, I've basically... I mean, the Ghost Router is very capable... Um, but it has, um, limitations when you're dealing with, with multiple subnets, when you want multiple, um, like for instance, if you even multiple ISPs, stuff like that. Um, but anything like a more basic configuration, like you have, it's basic, it's probably the optimal thing for most people. Um, it's also it's also good to use one as an access point that ba- you're basically isolated from its router functionality and just use it as a wireless access point. So they're good for that. Um, 
and they're basically meant to be used in conjunction with um, a uh, Ghost Sentinel, which is a, another router box, but it is a lot. Um, has a lot more features and has a lot more security features and auditing features. Um, and it'll do like the multi-network stuff and multi-ISPs a lot easier. Like you can make the ghost router do a bunch of stuff, but like the multi-ISP, but it's a lot more difficult than the other machines. And the other machines basically are running um, a free BSD based system. So it's even like us, it's like a very minimal footprint. Yeah, so since since you brought up OpenBSD, um, I've seen, and you would be clued into this, um, but I've seen, um, although I see fear about everything all the time, so I've kind of desensitized to it now, and I'm kind of, you know, very skeptical about it at all times. But um, someone, there are people, people on, I guess over the past month or two, I've seen people um, on t Twitter talking about some, um, I guess not, maybe not a backdoor in Linux, maybe it is a backdoor in Linux. Um, um, and, uh, sent, you know, but recommending open BSD over, over Linux. Have you heard anything about that? Um, as of late, that oh, might yeah, be a vulnerability, yeah. a big vulnerability. Okay. What happened was there cool. is a Glad compression utility. <laughs> yeah. There's a compression utility that had a vulnerability that was pretty big and it was, um, basically led to a vulnerability in SSH and, um, you know, if I recall correctly, that's probably what people are talking about. And Sounds right. that didn't affect all Linux versions. And it was patched. So it's like, it if you had the wrong version of Linux, which it's ironic that Kali Linux was affected. Um, it's, supposed and, be, it's supposed to be more secure, and, right? But it was one of those... Yeah, yeah. But, you know, nobody knew. Like, it's just, right. it was just like this benign, you know, compress, like zip utility, basically. Like, you know, it just goes to show you that, you know, bugs and malicious things can be lurking pretty much anywhere, even in open source. It's just open source allows you to look to see. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like a, a magic bullet that'll make it secure it's just that right it's auditable versus not being able to be audited so apparently no one audited that to the level it needed and they had a vulnerability so it happens with pretty much any system made by humans so i don't think it's a reason to switch from linux cool okay there's lots of vulnerabilities yeah and bsd i mean bsd is awesome for what it is i mean it's great for what i'm using it for um but could you compare it to like it, Ubuntu, um, just like standard Ubuntu that you've installed on all my ghost devices? How like how is it no, different? Is it, oh, more, no. is it, is it more difficult? Um, God, I've never even seen it. I don't think. Well, it's it's hardware support is very lacking. And when I say hardware support, I'm talking about like graphics drivers and like stuff like that. Um, like you would not have a. Uh, a comparable desktop experience at all okay. if you were using okay. some BSD based um, and one of the things about BSD that makes it or you know the open BSD or free BSD I'm getting confused which is which now in the conversation <laughs> they're different but ah but anyway but the whole thing is it just has such a it's very minimalistic it doesn't have a lot to exploit because it's like bare bones. Um, and um, as for a desktop, though, it's just not a very, I mean, even for server use, like it's, it's really picky with network hardware. Like even these um, ghost sentinels, like it's recommended that you use all Intel network hardware. And like a lot of the times the built-in network device, like wired, you know, network device on a lot of motherboards is not Intel. And like, you'll have issues with it being flaky performance. It's not any good with USB network adapters. Like 
those don't work right on it. <laughs> None of the drivers work right. Like it's, it's like Linux was when I got not maybe not when I got into Linux in the late nineties, but like in the early two thousands, as far as like a desktop operating system goes. Right. In my opinion, I mean, there's probably <laughs> BSD fans that are like fuming now, but oh well. Yeah, it happens. Hey, it, it does not. Okay, I'm not. Imp- it doesn't sound impressive. Impressive at all. And the pic- one of the pictures of the desktop I, I looked at looked like Windows 95 or something. Um, so which you know, it's it's not a knock about you know, like it doesn't have to look modern or whatever. But it, I didn't look very hard. Um, but yeah, I'm not super interested in looking more more deep, deeper deeper deeply into it. But oh, but as um, a router and a firewall and network intrusion detection device, like yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. That's pretty much where it's at. Um, <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, well, maybe at some point I got the Ghost Router. The Ghost Router. Um, t- uh, t- I guess uh, that that's 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 going. Um, and I guess the next thing I want to talk about, which would be the, the next the next project here um, at Pasnia, um, I guess the next infrastructure project are the next cloud servers that we've talked about um, just privately. I guess uh, on regular episodes of this podcast, as well as uh, Second Realm Assemblies. Um, but uh, basically, uh, private next cloud servers for. Um, you know, I guess mesh networks at you know various at various Pasnias, and then um, you know a, so, a, a quote unquote public one um, for you know more broad things. Um, so I was working on getting the private one set up because I wanted to to get uh, you know kind of like a file sharing um, set up. You know, podcast videos, audiobooks, um, you know, how to guides, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, like a local, I guess you could, yeah, local YouTube pod uh, pod podcatcher, um, et cetera. Um, here at Pasnia, or here at Veritas, and then I guess an example to replicate. And uh, I, I got some initial things set up and did some initial testing, and uh, you know fired them up, fired both of them up a couple times, um, one of them a few times. And uh, then I went back like a month ago, and this is why I messaged you about it, Jamin. And they both had the exact, they both are having the exact same issue where if you held down the power button, they would just kind of flash, but they wouldn't turn on. Um, so I don't know how it happened to both of them. Um, <laughs> But um, that'll be something that uh, we'll have to tackle at some point. But, um, yeah, I guess yeah, that's I the next big infrastructure project. Yeah, I was very, very confused with those symptoms. I don't know why either one would do that. But, yeah, we'll, we just have to take them out of the box and connect power directly to them with the other power supply. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> right on. Yeah, so that, that'll be, it'll be one of the, the next things. Uh, the next things here. Um, I suppose, um, to, to get more, to get more back into, I guess, what you're working and focusing on now, um, we can kind of, I guess, more fully transition to the, to the AI topic, uh, unless you had anything else on the, on the ghost system or anything I, I mentioned. Well, um, there are going to be AI capabilities in the different servers for the ghost system as well. Um, it's now built into Nextcloud. Um, like current versions of Nextcloud have a basic, well, they have a few options. I mean, one of them is a basic AI chatbot that has, it's run on a local backend. And um, they have some other options for interfacing with other local chatbots, like kind of built into the thing. So um, basically I can, integrate that into the next cloud servers really easily on that level but hmm. that's that's really basic and it isn't really much more complicated to just run the actual kind of state of the art ai interface programs instead so i mean there's lots of options there with ai and ghost cloud stuff <laughs> gotcha gotcha Okay. Um, very interesting. So I guess, uh, I, I kind of mentioned uh, to you just a little bit pre-show, but, um, it's, uh, it's good timing. I guess it's, it's kind of good timing that we're talking cause I'd love to get your take on this. Um, but yesterday, um, I guess, uh, yesterday for you on, on April 20th, 420, um, there was a debate on, uh, Gore, the podcast, uh, between Jeremiah Harding and Brian, uh, Brian Sovereign on basically, um, answering the question, uh, is AI a genuine threat to humanity? And uh, Jeremiah hmm. Harding argued in the affirmative that yes, it is, um, and Brian Sovereign um, argued in the the negative that no, it's most definitely not. Um, so I guess um, yeah, I suppose just 
I I only got I only got to listen to about half of it. Um, so I was out doing out doing stuff on the homestead, but I will go back and finish it. But I I am curious, um, kind of where your take is, just to to give kind of a a, a sense overview of like the positions. Um, Brian is basically saying that artificial general intelligence, as it's described, is not possible. Um, things like OpenGPT becoming Skynet is like asking a toaster oven to be a television. It's just not what it's built to do. Um, it's basically what he's saying. Is like I guess it's he's that, those were just a couple of the things I picked up on. And then uh, Jeremiah is more so coming at it from a, um, I guess, uh, looking at nation states um, using it to uh, using AI technology to track and trace and basically enslave populations. Um, and yeah. kind of coming at coming at it more from I guess, I guess a conspiratorial conspira- conspiracist angle, and I don't mean that in a pejorative sense. Um, which I agree, yeah, with, yeah. I agree with both positions. But um, yeah, I guess uh, I, I guess with all that said, I, I guess um, and kind of what they did because it, it is because artificial intelligence is kind of a meaningless term because um, it can mean anything from like you know the very basic shit up to like. Um, yeah, up to like Skynet or beyond that, you know. So I guess um, to, just to begin with, um, I guess I'm curious. I guess more more of a philosophical, overarching discussion here. Can you define artificial intelligence from your point of view? And uh, then yeah, I guess if if you want to answer the answer that answer the question, uh, is AI a genuine threat to humanity? I'd be curious what you, what your thoughts were. Well, I don't know. I have a real nuanced um, view, I guess. So you know, there's AGI. And I definitely consider that different from AI. And I have a pretty broad um, recognition of what intelligence is and can be. Like, I under you know I understand fungal intelligence. Like, there are many, many, many types of intelligence that aren't just logical thinking and rationality and um, stuff like that. So, you know, AGI. I would say is an artificial intelligence that is more capable um, or as or approaching the capability of a human when it comes to cognitive abilities. Um, There's a spectrum there. Okay. Like human cognitive abilities, you know, we have, like 16 or or eight cognitive functions, I think it is. Um, If you're a Jungian, basically. So each of those cognitive functions would have to be simulated in some way. And all those functions together would basically, you know, if they were all working together, the theory is the emergent property would be the, you know, advanced AGI, right? Um, But I don't think a lot of those cognitive ways of processing can be modeled because we don't understand them enough. Like there are like human intuition. There are like, there are two sides. There's an extroverted and introverted side to intuition. And introverted intuition can't be modeled because we don't understand it enough. Um, so like the artificial intelligence that can be made with today's technology and technology just in the near future, it isn't going to be human level, like to where you have all those cognitive functions working together to create this, um, human level intelligence. It's going to be, it's going to be like this weird golem type in <laughs> intelligence where it's missing these key things that will make it so much different than human, right? Like it, um, mm-hmm. but as far as like IQ, I don't see any reason why it won't be surpassing humans in IQ. Like, um, as far as like stuff like recalling information, I mean, it's already way more advanced just because of the amount of information it has access to um, in the detail, you know? So I don't know. Like I said, it's a nuanced opinion or perspective on intelligence itself. So, but do I think the the weird, (laughs) whatever AI is going to be is going to be a threat? Of course, like who controls it 
is going to be the determining factor to what it's doing because it's a tool. Right. I mean, if it's controlled by nation states and NGOs and um, corporations, it's going to do the things that they want it to do. And we've already seen the algorithms that they've come up with for social media um, and the fake news that they've generated without AI. So, I mean, we can basically people plugged into like the mainstream can pretty much look forward to a matrix like existence where they have their own little <laughs> meta narrative and their own little reality bubble and everything is being spoon fed to them to keep them in line, you know? So I definitely think that's going to happen. Um, and I also, um, I don't know. I'm, there is a theory that comes from um, game theory uh, that there is an emergent intelligence being created. This is aside from AI. This is just a an emergent intelligence that is being created by all of the um, all of the perverse incentives of the system the you know just let's say like just the global geopolitical system um like all the perverse incentives things like the iron law of oligarchy um the iron law of bureaucracy you know those are all basically iterations of this emergent intelligence that the theorists are calling moloch and um it's basically all the it's like the whirlwind of all these years of these you know anti these actions that have real natural law consequences that just keep getting delayed and it's basically turning um you know it's it's basically the driving force over the totalitarian state and everything else is this you know um in, instead of some type of shadowy shadowy organization you know pulling the strings on the entire world the theory is just basically it's it's it, this intelligence is emerging because of all the people doing the same types of action that have the same type of negative consequences and um it's spiraling out of control so part of the theory is that um AI can become the embodiment of that because if you look into like other other embodiments like the arms race is an embodiment of the Moloch concept right um, mm -hmm. so you have you have people doing these actions that are in their that aren't in their best interest but they have they feel they have to because they have to one up the other person because they're going to do it like it's that type of mentality but you know the entire basically the entire um mainstream of the world is has that mentality and it's going to be embodied in ai um and it already has been i mean just all the um like all the uses of ai for manipulation and the fact that ai does lie like the like chat gpt and stuff <clears throat> will give you false information on purpose if you ask about sensitive things and um you know if it's not refusing to answer yeah yeah well okay that's that's uh yeah um an interesting interesting take too um but i'm with you i mean that's that's kind of my um uh, i mean it's uh you know going back to the debate I, it's, it's yes to both of them um it definitely is uh it's just like with uh it's one, one of the reasons why um why you you know are putting together the ghost system and why you do the, the hardware hacking of the uh, ghost phones and ghost pads is um because yeah i mean the, the technology is there whether we whether you know whether we like it or not um and we might as well well we have to own it um, or it's going to own us so um, it's kind of what it kind of what it comes down to, and um, well, exactly, and, and and especially with Google, like Google might even be like obviously like 
the state is, you know, obviously the coercive, inst- the biggest coercive institution. So it's obviously you don't want them to have the data either. But um, if what we're talking about now with like data gathering. Um, and things like that with Google, um, and like yeah, especially Google, um, all the information that they that they have that they're feeding into their um, into the into their AIs, because that's all we're talking about really at the end of the day, right? With pretty much any AI, um, I guess in this area, it's 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 you know putting data processing power um, and putting energy towards, um, and I guess you know mass mass information and then running that through algorithms, you know, for whatever purpose, right? Um, and we're just talking about scale or or I guess uh, or purpose. Because um, it can be on like a commercial level, um, or it can be on like a, you know much 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 larger scale. Is that kind of a, is that kind of fair? You think, um, Morris? Is that off base? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I guess that's I guess that's one because um, I I, I kind of I've kind of thought about this before too. Because um, obviously blockchain is going to be one of those things that um, which it already ha- which it already has. I, I guess there was a um, there was. A, I, I re-listened to a podcast, or I guess a um, podcast from a few years back. And um, I guess there was a baby that was born, like, born in like India. Um, it was the first blockchain baby, and um, you know it got like a blockchain number on on the blockchain, and all of its you know activities were tracked you know on the blockchain. So obviously that's going to happen too, you know, just along alongside AI. Um, but one of the big one of the big things with Bitcoin, one of the big you know big debates is you know the block size and, and fees and all that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, obviously privacy by default in Bitcoin is problematic, but. Um, at the same time, I think the block size is actually a huge advantage. Um, it's a huge advantage and um, protection against this sort of um, sort of you know blockchain or AI tyranny. Because um, if it costs that much to transact on the blockchain, you're not you're not going to be able to store someone's entire life on there, right? Um, it's just not it's just not possible. Um, <clears throat> So I think that might actually be might actually be an advantage in Bitcoin's favor, whereas a lot of people would say it's 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 one of its downsides or or flaws. But um, I don't know if you have anything on that, but just a kind of a random thought. Well, I mean, I mean, it seems like they lean towards Ethereum for that type of stuff, anyway. Right. Yeah. I mean, Ethereum is pretty much made for that, from what I understand. Yeah, that is that's that's a good point. Yeah, they don't necessarily need Bitcoin for that. Um, but yeah, that's fair. You know, that's why I've always stayed away from Ethereum, even when it was super profitable, which, you know, I have mixed feelings like I, maybe I should have made some money. But like um, just knowing that it was championed by the same guy that made Planeteer <laughs> or Palantir. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely a good point. Ethereum is, yeah, it's it's bred for that. Yeah. Um, and apparently you still so can't run it. You so can't actually, you can't still run a full, you still cannot uh, like load, load a full node on, on Ethereum. Apparently that's still not possible. <laughs> yeah. I, apparently it's going to get um, some more institutional adoption too. So I'm not, I'm not excited about that being more adopted. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, that's true. I've never, um, I don't think I've ever in- interacted with the Ethereum blockchain. Might have had like one or two Ethereum transactions, but they're in uh, in a Jax wallet. So I don't think I've ever directly inter- interacted with the Ethereum blockchain, which yeah, I'm I'm very proud of now, kind of like you are. Um, but yeah, I guess um, I guess let's let's talk <laughs> let's let's talk uh, more applications here. You've you've gone through through some of them, um, but um, yeah, there are you know very, many uses of AI, and I don't think these are nece- these are you know. Um, necess- I don't think they're they're definitely not a genuine threat to humanity. But like for my use is essentially just like a Texas speech robot right now, Brian Free robot that I use in uh, uh, in the podcast. But um, I've also used uh, free AI, AI generated art images a couple times. Um, but uh, sometimes they come out super fucked, and uh, the people look like demons without faces. So um, I've kind of strayed away from using it for the most part because you can just tell like it looks like soulless. A lot of like the least the ones I was using they look like just soulless images. Um, at least my perspective. Yeah, there's a, there's there's so many variations and advancements and tricks with prompting with those. Um, S- Stable Diffusion three just came out, um, and they, you know, with each iteration, they just keep getting better and better with stuff like that. So it's like it's a moving target. Like if you tried it even a month ago, it's probably an order of magnitude better now. Like that's the advancements. Like for the LL, for the large language models, um, there's been tons of advancements, and Meta just released their um, Llama three models is open source, and uh, they are extremely good. 
and basically competing with the GPT-4s and um, Claude and uh, Gemini. And so those are able to be run on your own hardware. And there are a lot of an, another you know aspect of all this is not just running the models, running uncensored models, like models that will answer any question that you ask it. I mean that's a lot more. <laughs> it's a lot more useful than any of the gate kept ones. Um, like there are some really good fine tunes by uh, they get they're they're. The fine tune's called Dolphin. <coughs> I think the guy's like Eric Hartman or something like that. Eric Hartman? Uh, maybe. Uh, but anyway, they are completely uncensored. I mean, like, fine-tuned to be uncensored. Um, and they're just really interesting. Because it'll have any conversation you want. And like, all the off... All the... Uh, you know, all the censored stuff. I'm trying to think of... There's there's another really good uncensored model, too. But anyway, so... Um, as far as anybody that wants to try any of this open source, these open source text, is, um, text models out, there is a program called GPT for All, and it'll let you run them locally on your machine if you have a new enough system. And uh, it's basically what I'm using on the uh, Ghost Pad or Ghost Station AI systems for the large language models, and it's uh, it's pretty easy to get set up. It's a couple clicks, and then you download the models. But um, it has some good models on it. Yeah. So could so someone could um, if they were interested. Um, so when I if when I get them listed on the Elio Publications catalog, or if they just want them, um, you can do a ghost uh, ghost station with uh, um, probably with the AI stuff and pre-installed uh, if they order and request it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what the ghost station AIs are. They have right the cool. uh, they have two types of. Um, large language um, applications on them. Like there's a server that has all these advanced features, and then there is a basic um, chat program, which is the GPT for all. And it also has a chat with your documents capability, so it can do retrieval augmented. Oh, damn, that'd um, be nice as shit. Yeah. So, so basically, it helps you, you find your lost a... stuff in your file manager, basically, or your or on your computer. Oh, your you, documents. Oh, you can you give it a directory full of ebooks or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you can ask it questions about the content in them. Wow, oh. <laughs> that's amazing. It reads them for you, um, or it'll summarize them, or you know, you know, whatever you want. Um, but that's all built in, and your data isn't going anywhere. Like. Your data isn't being used by one of these big closed source places to train or keep tabs on you or, you know, whatever. It all just stays on your machine. Um, and the results for what most people are going to be using it for are comparable to the expensive closed source models. It's only when you get into some really advanced reasoning and like advanced writing and um, mathematics and coding is really where you start seeing the difference between the real state-of-the-art closed models and like the smaller open models that you can run on consumer hardware easily. Um, but even then, like these new ones for Meta, the coding capabilities are all like models. The size is kind of measured in billions of parameters. Okay, so a quote unquote small one is about seven or eight billion parameters. Like that is one that most people can run on their home computer, right? Um, and their new model at that many parameters is basically on the heels of models like GPT-4 
that are hundreds of billions of parameters as far as like the mathematics and reasoning and coding ability and stuff goes. So the, with each iteration of them, they keep getting more efficient for the model size. So it basically uh, the capabilities of these systems that I'm building just keep growing because with each new iteration, you get a new model that is better, but it's no bigger, and it runs just as fast, if not faster, than the old one. Wow. So it's like, um, it's like deflationary kind of, you know. That's yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. Um, so a couple couple things come to mind because um, <clears throat> I've seen people post on Twitter, at least with uh, Chat GPT. Um, yeah, that you like, yeah, you're talking that there are, there might be some issues with coding, but people were having it like actually develop software or at least like, you know, provide the framework or the, the, you know, the bones for it. Um, I'm kind of curious with, with what you were just saying about, you could, uh, you know, select a, uh, I guess a, a directory of, let's say in this case, all of the material, like all the books, um, all the books have been written, all the books on electrical engineering, um, like put all those books in a directory and then ha run it all through one of these ghost station AIs and then basically ask it questions on like, uh, you know, have it come up with, you know, a few different breakthrough energy possible, like breakthrough energy device possibilities. And I'm curious, like, I don't know if it, if it'd be possible. Um, but oh, that's, yeah. that's one, one of the things that comes oh, to mind. Sure. Yeah. One of, that's one of the, one thing that, that thing that comes to mind. Um, and then there was, um, so this would probably be a much easier one, but, um, someone called, like, I guess, a Rayo GPT where it basically upload all of the Vanu um, zines from the 60s and 70s and just put them all into the run them all into I guess uh, you know this this program and then you ask it questions and it'll answer from like you know like a Ray or Ivana perspective um, so you just I don't know a couple couple cool applications I think oh yeah I'm even with the software that's on these systems you can do that you can even give the uh, chat bot a personality you could make him Rayo Right on. It's cool. That's very it's cool. about a, a paragraph worth of text will give them personality. <laughs> it's that easy. Well, I love it. Um, so I guess that's um, I guess our uh, one of uh, I guess our things. I, I I do need to get some specs from you, um, but I want to get um, the regular ghost station, uh, the ghost station AI list, both of those listed, and then the ghost tablets too. And I think we'll pretty much be. Um, caught up on getting getting everything out there, but um, I mean, obviously, I love the you know the normal ghost pads. I um, mean, you know, I've got um, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely great machines. But um, yeah, I, I want I definitely want to make these more available and, and you know push them out there more. Um, yeah, there are a lot of you know content creators in, in, in the audience, freelancers and stuff that might do video editing or something, and uh, these ghost stations with Ubuntu Creator, Creator Studio. Um, yeah, they're 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 pretty spectacular, and then you have the ghost tablet for for other purposes, but. Um, yeah, if, uh, yeah, should definitely get those listed. And uh, if anyone's interested, uh, yeah, Bitcoin or Minera preferred, obviously. Um, but yeah, and and really the the big advantage the ghost the T four hunt or T four twenty ghost pads have over like the tablets and stuff is they they're running cubes, so like they are if you want the most locked down system, that's it. You know what I mean? So the T four twenty ghost pad series. That is the one that can do all the um, compartmentalization and all that. Yeah. But if you just, I mean, if you just want to run a regular, you know, like a standard Linux operating system, then any of the other ones are great. Yeah, certainly. The... Certainly. So I guess the the other question, I, I guess the other thing, well, maybe maybe there's other things to list too. Um, maybe uh, uh, do you have any ghost writers around that we could put toss up on the Hollywood Publications catalog? Um. Yeah. I I'm actually. Let's see. I have um. I have some ghost sentinels, ghost routers. <clears throat> um. Some next cloud servers. So yeah, I, I have uh. So he's got a lot of well, stuff to list. We'll have to, yeah. We'll double yeah, the we'll have to talk. <laughs> yeah. I just, I haven't been like focused on anything customer facing or selling anything. I've been mostly focused on R&D and getting my own stuff together here. So I have a bunch of stuff that I've been collecting and building. And um, so I have 
basically building some inventory. So when I, we do start offering some of these things that I'm not kind of racing around to build them, I have some in the bank, you know? Right. So that's what I'm doing right now. So pretty much all the products we talked about, I have some in the bank at this point and uh, um, maybe not ready to go out the door, but close for pretty much all of them. Okay, cool, cool. So we're, we're getting getting close. Um, cause yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to uh, to offer like an entire Ghost System bundle, um, you know, down there, down there. That'd be, that'd be cool. I'm excited to get, get them all you know what's listed wild? out there. I, what's that? I, I ran the numbers on a, a couple different bundles and even like one with the server and like a ghost pad and a ghost station, it was still like less than a new iPhone. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I can't believe I don't. This is going to get me into a rant of Go iPhone for hate, but Go for it. <laughs> no, it's like okay. So all this AI is basically why these phones have the processing power they do, and they have that because they're going to be ai nanny cams for the fucking state and that's all i'm going to say <laughs> you know like that's that's the only like these people who buy these iphones that have like a processor that is like equal to a desktop pc of like four years ago and like and they're use, using facebook and like just your basic apps that work on a burner phone and i'm thinking like you paid two grand for that I don't know. Christ. Okay. Gen X rant over. <clears> oh, <throat> uh, no. I'm with you, though. I'm with you. Um, I do not miss the spy phones. Um, I definitely don't miss those days. Uh, still using that same um, that same ghost phone um, that I got from you. And the, the same uh, white phone and the same, uh, I guess, black phone. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's amazing. These... Um, so one of the reasons I've been using the ghost tablet more is the computer, the laptop we use at the distillery is a windows machine from like four years ago. And they sent it with like 120 gigabytes of data and like 104 gigabytes of it is like, um, stuff that like, it's the, uh, it's the apps that you need to have on there and all of the associated hardware that you can't get rid of. So like now I'm to the point where like the computer's almost unusable because like there's nothing else I can delete. Um, and I can't even install the new <laughs> update. So it's like, I, like I, I basically was like, I'm done dealing with this piece of shit. I'm taking the ghost tablet in. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's crazy how like, uh, um, like that thing is basically worthless now, unless which well, I guess what I'm gonna have to do, um, which apparently it doesn't look hard. I'm gonna put in a new SSD in it. Um, have to upgrade it. It's only like seventy dollars. You know, it's, it's so cheap. I can get a one terabyte hard drive, like SSD hard drive, and they 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 opted to put in like a hundred and twenty gigabyte. Like what a bunch of pricks. Um, <laughs> really, that's crazy how cheap storage is. Um, so yeah, that computer is basically useless. But the ghost tablets, the ghost pads, like these are all you know the old Lenovo ThinkPads from like. Um, that's the comment my mom made. She's like, Dad used to have one of those computers back like twenty years ago. Like, yeah, he did. And I was like, Yeah, they're the best computers out there. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's crazy. Like planned obs like the obsolescence thing is just. I mean, it's they they sell you crap and they you, people don't know any better. Uh, they they don't even. I, and I wouldn't I wouldn't understood the specs ten years ago when I bought my laptop. So I mean, I, I wouldn't wouldn't have been impervious well, to this. But yeah, go ahead. Well, a lot of my R and D has just been basically spent on finding those models like finding the models of laptop that are like legendary, right? Like for instance, the ghost stations, they're not just based on some random laptop I got a good deal on or something like those are, those were the most expensive laptop you could buy from those eras from Dell. And they're basically tanks. There's yeah, they upgradable are. as a desktop. They're like the, the first, the, uh, the, the entry level ghost stations are like the last laptop that has a socketed processor that you could replace and upgrade. Like every component on them is replaceable and upgradable. There's like a huge logistical supply cha chain for them because they were Dell, you know, they were in industrial grade Dells. So like power supplies are dirt cheap, but they're like super high quality, like 90 some percent platinum efficiency and stuff like they are like the creme de la creme of their generations. And the irony is that when you go on eBay to buy them as used ones, a lot of the times they go for the same price as like the Walmart jobs because people are just buying based on the generation of processor in them or how much RAM it has or whatever, you know, like it's wild. 
So I try to find good deals on like the most legendary laptops I can find and build these um, products out of because they're supposed to be able to last and be repairable and they're definitely, you know, a big fuck you to plan obsolescence. It's each one of these is a middle finger to it. It is. And I'm it doing is. as hard as I can. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was just going to yeah. mention that even so, obviously, there's a little bit of a markup on the LEO publication site. Um, but at the same time, even if you look at the prices that, that I have them listed for, um, there's still like if you look at prices of laptops nowadays um, for anything comparable, you're probably going to be walking out the door. Um, I remember back when I bought the, the only Windows laptop I still use, um, it was like 2013. And by the time I, you know, paid for all the Windows bullshit and like all the extra stuff. Um, that you don't need, but they sell you. You're, it was probably about a thousand dollars. You know, by the time I was walking out the door, and with these, um, we have one that goes for let's just like it's nine listed for nine fifty, but that's the highest known one. Um, the other ones are you know sev around seven hundred, you know seven hundred and up. So, um, and 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 the advantage with that, you know, as you're saying, like, you own you 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 you, we, we, you own the shit. Um, but it's it's yeah. Again, it's it's the fact that. Um, Parts are easily easily available. Um, it's going to last for a long time. A lot of these, uh, a lot of these come with come with a lot of storage space by default. But there's like extra, um, you know, extra bays to add another, you know, terabyte or two terabytes of storage. Um, so this th these things are going to last you, you know, like 10, 20, 30 years. Um, obviously, depending upon how you, you know, how it's taken care of and, and a bunch of factors. But regardless, they're going to last a long ass time, and and anything is pretty easy replaceable. So, um, yeah, it's they're they're definitely definitely. Um, super good values and i mean i'm not even just trying to sell them oh, it's yeah. just it's just they're, they're 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 it's good shit um and and people don't understand like because i know before i switched to to ubuntu or to linux and these things um i was scared shitless um that i wouldn't be able to do what i did before um and yeah i i, I will never go back um and i and there's uh, there's only advantages there's no disadvantages as far as i see it now so which is better switch to this you uh, why, why would why would why, why wouldn't you use anything but the best i guess if you can Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, and I mean these these systems are what I use. I mean, and everything I do. Um, I've been running the workstation class systems, both the HPs and the Dells, for a very long time because they're just the value of them is just awesome. Like, and those the uh, Ghost stations, most of them can fit around five internal drives. Jeez. So, like that. That's more than a lot of. That's more than most small form factor desktops can fit. So, like they're super expandable. Um, and I like that the older ones yet are cool because they even have the uh, express card slots that uh, are basically a one-time PCI Express slot. That it's like a little flat card that you stick in. And there's all kinds of you know there's USB and network and all kinds of cards you can buy that fit that. Hmm. Very I have one that fits an external GPU even for mining. So you can just jack in an external GPU into the ghost station or even the ghost pads have them. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Lots of possibilities. <laughs> lots of possibilities. Um, yeah. And you're not going to find any of this stuff out of the box at your local surveillance sales store or anything. So, um, yeah, it's amazing. I'm, I'm excited to get, uh, you know, I'm obviously excited. Um, I, I talked to you about this, Jamin, but I, I, and I guess I'll mention some of the LUA business stuff was um, posting job listings on Bitcoin or jobs um, for, you know, affiliate and um, trying to find someone to, you know, set up LUA publications, branches overseas and help with translation and all that, all the publishing stuff. Um, not really much on the second, second aspect, but um, I came across somebody who, um, he published one book, um, it was a best, best seller and he was on Fox news and MSNBC and, um, places doing interviews. And now he's, you know, a homesteader and he's getting really into privacy. Um, and obviously he's into Bitcoin, but he's switching everything to like more private and, um, he's going to promote the, um, the basic ghost pad and the basic ghost phone. Um, at least his pet last our yeah, awesome. conversation and his, uh, it's gonna be in the first chapter of his new book. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> um, there's a um, want to get these things out there. Um, want to get these things out there. And, um, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing how many have gotten out there uh, out there so far. But much more to do. Much more to do. But uh, I guess I don't really have much else um, on um, on that realm. Let me see if there was. Um, um, I don't think so. Um, got anything, brother? Anything else on? 
on ghost pads, ghost um, systems, <clears throat> future projects. Oh, oh, what well, you were talking about uh, expandability, I just remembered about this project that I was screwing around with. I found a, you know, a 3D file, an STL file, for a little drawer that goes in place of the CD-ROM drives in the ghost pads. And the drawer will hold like SD cards and a uh, um, thumb drive. I don't know. I thought it was pretty. I printed one out. Oh, a drawer on the side of the ghost so pad, I, you mean? So you have like a storage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Like it would be, it would look like the DVD ROM drive, but it would pull out and it'd be a drawer. Okay, yeah. You know, stick your tails drive in it or whatever. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <clears throat> Right on. So we'll get we'll get some new things listed on the site. Um, you got more stuff, um, more stuff in the works. Um, eventually, uh, the entire Ghost System Ghost System bundles, bundles will be available. Um, lots to look forward to. And um, I guess the the other obviously the other thing about this, you can you know buy them from you know buy them from us, or you can obviously get the stuff and and, and uh, flash it all yourself. Um, it's a great thing about it. So whatever you prefer, um, just get it. However you can. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, closing thoughts, Jamie. Anything else before I because before we before we close out, we covered a, a lot in an hour. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think we pretty much covered <clears throat> everything we were going to talk about mm -hmm. for sure. Yep, yep. So I guess to, just one last thing that comes to mind that I'll, I'll mention to you. Um, I, I'm not sure if you've if you've looked into Cordal at all or um, Noster, um, but um, Cordal is more of a decentralized internet overall alternative. Um, that you might want to look into. I've been on it for the past month or so, and it's really, really slick. Um, it's uh, I, I've talked about uh, Dr. Berlando from Alphabetic quite a bit in the past, but his his partner Mike Winter is one of the main developers on it. Um, but I hadn't really looked into it that much until I, I had a conversation with uh, with Doc Barber uh, from Agora Market, and uh, he kind of uh, I guess sold me on it, and I I went and checked it out, and I was like, yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's got there's a marketplace on there, there's a blog, video platform, email, encrypted email. Um, everything so um yeah it's worth looking into for sure and then um i, I was just gonna mention this so I'm, I'm on that and then i just got on nos on uh, noster um within the past week via amethyst on um the ghost phone um i tried it about a year ago noster and it was kind of shit um and there are kind of some issues with it but amethyst is on the, available on the ghost phone and i would definitely recommend um you jamin or anyone else if you aren't already on there to check it out it's a, a twitter alternative um on the noster network um with i guess lightning enabled bitcoin enabled um, it's, uh, it's pretty slick. Um, so yeah, anyone, anyone out there wants to connect, um, I dropped my, my, uh, my in pub in the, uh, telegram chat, tele uh, te telegram passing a chat, or you can just email me, Shane at liberty, liberty and we can get connected, um, on either. But, um, just thought I'd mention those, um, couple of new platforms. I don't, I don't jump on new platforms that often cause I mean, I'm already on enough. It's kind of the way I see it. So if I get on anything else and I mention it, then it's usually worth it. All those simple X has kind of been was kind of a disappointment, I guess, in a little bit, a little sense. But I guess I just haven't used it that much lately. I found some some other alternatives that might be better. So, um, anyway, you ever heard of either of those? No, huh? Okay, I haven't. Right on. Well, I'll, I'll check them out. Yep, yeah, I'll I'll send a message and signal afterwards. Um, it's, I guess oh, cool. it, it's N O S T R. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, cool, cool platforms. But that's all I've got. Um, I guess uh, I'll leave it there. Uh, LibertyAttack dot com for all things books bundles. Uh, apothecary items, privacy tools, um, and uh, Pasnia Farm stuff, uh, canned goods. And uh, uh, yeah, I guess Pasnia.com for uh, all things of free republic. Uh, learn about uh, you know our, our, our gatherings here in physical space and time. Uh, Pasnia.com forward slash Fonu Fest. Um, and then, yeah, while you're there at uh, Pasnia.com, check out, uh, you can click on the Pasnia Services and Marketplaces tab. And uh, if you have a login, um, you can check out the vetted map and directory. You can check out Pasnia list, the Craigslist for, uh, for the second realm. Uh, and you can even make a listing. Anybody can post there. That is actually a completely public thing. So if you have a listing you want to put on Pasnia list, um, go ahead and please do it. Um, and I'll, I'll share it around to uh, throughout the network so people see it and hopefully uh, um, trade with you. And uh, the I guess the final. Uh, oh gosh, what are the other um, what are the other updates that I'm missing? I know I'm missing one. Um, oh yeah, Pasnia.chat forward slash meet. Um, so this is um, I, basically just a generic. Um, generic chat room that's available. I guess it's open all the time. If you ever want to chat with self-liberators, hop in there. I really haven't seen one in there. I've, I've jumped in a time or two, but um, 
maybe at some point it'll it'll get populated. Maybe you stay in there and a couple people are in there at the same time. You know, maybe some gets going, and um, maybe we'll do a uh, schedule and organized, I guess, chat there at some point in the future. But it is available passing at chat passing dot chat forward slash meet. Um, and um, I guess the last thing at vanipodcast dot com for all things Vanu. <coughs> um. Yeah, and uh, I guess that yeah, yeah, that was the, that was the Vani. I knew there was one update with the the Vani website. Episodes one through fifty and some of the intermission episodes were not um, working. The links weren't. Um, they weren't playing on podcatchers. But I did fix all of the um, uh, episodes one through fifty and um, the, of the main podcast feed. And then uh, the intermission intermission episodes. I've started updating those. So the podcast feed will be back in order um, very shortly. It's just been a very tedious process. I have to re-upload all the all the files. So it's it's taken a little bit. Um, but anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, until next time, cheers. Vonia Life 2025, Resurrected. Introduction, back in March 1973, Rayo and many of the most hardcore self-liberators of the time, and likely even today, published a massive 75,000-word issue of Vonia Life, that is shockingly relevant and of immense value, even today. And while that was a highlight, there was also an entire zine series of Vonia Life, which I recently digitized. As Rayo finished up those last words of transcribing, it was with a heavy heart dot until the idea hit him like a collapsing roof of a badly engineered underground shelter. Vonia Life should most certainly be resurrected, just as the overall freedom strategy of Vonu has in the modern day and age. And if you know anything about Vonya Life, you know some of the greatest content came from contributors. That's where you come in. Let's dive into the plan. The plan. Vonya Life, March 1973, was the only issue released in that year. Similarly, we should aim for one book a year, the first being Vonya Life 2025. That will give ample time to acquire and create content, and to have plenty to report on as far as developments, or setbacks, of our liberated lifestyles. Content Section 1, Situations and Searches Lifestyle Reports from Self-Liberators, a report about your liberated lifestyle, things you've learned, your goals, what led you to venuism slash self-liberation, etc. Reviews of books, equipment, organizations, tips and tricks, etc. Information that you feel is valuable to pass on, that's not in article form. Section 2, General Strategy. Back in Von Ulife's heyday, topics sought out included, Van Nomadism, Pedestrian Nomadism, Wilderness Von U, International Travel, Family and Children, Intentional Communities, New Country Projects, Financial Independence, Health Liberation, Von U in Cities, and Underground Shelters and Troglodism, we still want articles on any and all of those topics, but additional ones include, private communications, sovereign networking, volueing in cities in the 2020s, alternative housing solutions, etc. If you're curious about your topic in particular, just ask. Examples of both will be posted at vonupodcast.com slash the year 2025. Timeframes any submissions must be made by July 1st, 2025. After a few months of editing and preparing, we will aim for a fall 2025 release. Notes this is not a general, send us an article submission to fill space. It has to be of the caliber that Vonulife deserves and was founded upon, hardcore solutions slash hardcore action, no political crusading and no collective movementism, the principle of voluntarism, that all interactions should be voluntary, must be maintained. I.e., don't siphon, steal, gas to fund your van nomadism. General proofreading slash editing will be done on every article, maintaining each author's individual voice, but as always, editorial designs have to be made. Email submissions, questions, ideas to, shane at libertyunderattack.com.